Hello and welcome to the latest feature video and this time we're going to go over various uh, updates with Digistix, uh, New Rack and Chameleon and just outline some of those new features. So let's start the ball rolling with Digistix which has had a, a new update. So the big news here is that the number of external buses has been increased from 4 to 8 so we can actually have 8 channels of external effects. Now as you can see here I've got a single instance of uh, Digistix running in channel 1 of AUM and I'm just adding uh, new instances from the menu and the advantage now is that we can output any of the 16 mixer channels to one of these 8 external buses which can carry its own effects. Okay now let's turn our attention to Evolver and we've had a similar thing with Evolver, we've added uh, um, the ability to actually support up to four outputs. So each of the four lanes can now be output to a separate output channel within uh, AUM. Now, just as a quick demonstration on how that works, uh, in this next example, we've got uh, four individual buses uh, assigned to one instance of Evolver. Now, if you look just below the power button, we now have a multi out button. And if I toggle this button, it will now send each track individually to its own channel within AUM. Okay, now to Chameleon Sampler. Now this is a great little tool. It's an AUV3 instrument which allows you to record your own sound. So you might want to sample your own hardware synthesizers or even sample AUV3s that maybe don't work so well these days or if you want to uh, sample a monophonic instrument and turn it into a polyphonic instrument then this is actually quite a nice little tool for that. It can also be used as a sound source for Evolver and uh, DigiKeys if you own either of those two programs. So those programs can load patches created in Chameleon. Now I covered the auto sample feature in the last video but I want to go over these new additions uh, because it, it becomes a whole lot, lot easier than it did before. And in this case I'm going to try and uh, sample Continua and the patch in particular is a monophonic patch. So what we're going to do is record this and turn it into a polyphonic patch. Now in order to hear audio passing through Chameleon we have to turn on the monitor. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the user bank and I'm going to create a new patch here. I'm just going to create a patch called test. Now in order to sample a keyboard or a AUV3 we need to actually record multiple samples at different note positions and then map them across a MIDI keyboard. Now we have the auto sample feature this becomes a very very easy process. So I press the record button to open the record dialog. In this window I'm just going to uh, press the auto sample button. Now this feature works by sending a series of MIDI note ons and offs to either an external piece of hardware or a local uh, AUV3 instrument and then records the output. These settings really govern uh, how long the keys held down and the spacing between those keys. Now if you're familiar with this feature from the last version you'll notice that there's a few extra features including the loop button and when that's enabled Chameleon will not only record the uh, individual uh, audio responses from the MIDI notes but it will also attempt to create uh, loop points within those samples. Um, in most cases it does a reasonably good job um, and you might not have to even do any edits but if you, you can make minor tweaks afterwards if necessary but in the main you just um, press the button and let it go. Ha nothing could be easier than this. Now how long this process takes depends on a lot of things including the spacing between the individual samples or notes, uh, the length of those notes and so on. Now you can see the progress on the little keyboard at the bottom and you can see it's advancing in octave steps and we've got one octave to go and then we complete. 
Now, the, the the smaller the note spacing, probably the better the sample, but just for this example, and just to speed up the process, I've picked octave divisions. Okay, we're done. And now if we disable the monophonic option, we have a polyphonic sample based on a monophonic instrument. Okay, so now to new rack. Now the latest version of new rack added two new modulation effects. Uh, one was a Leslie speaker emulation and one was a Univibe. So let's have a listen. And now let's take a listen to the uh, Univibe. Now as you can hear with this one, you can create some quite unique and wacky sounds. A little bit OTT at times, but you know, it's uh, an alternative. And another effect we've added in the most recent version is a reverse delay. <laughs> Now one of the modules I'm going to demonstrate here is something called a multiband splitter which can be found in the filter section. Now this splits up the uh, incoming audio into three separate bands and outputs on three separate bands. And we use something called a 3 into 1 merge to group those back together again. So I've just wired those up. Now this gives us the advantage of being able to assign effects within specific frequency bands. Something you cannot do conventionally and here you can see we're using a flanger on the mid frequencies which avoids muddying those bass tones um, I could even go as far as to stick something like a tape delay on the high frequency bands and this is just something you could not do without using new rack so let's look at a new feature which uh, shows off this modular design in this case the new pattern automation now the great thing about this effect is it syncs everything up to the host tempo. So if I start the playback on the host door and randomise some data here, it can send out this data to another effect. So if I add something like a phaser here, I'm playing something like a basic drum beat that uh, is locked to tempo. If you listen carefully you can hear the LFO. If I turn the speed of the LFO up you can hear the phaser effect running on its own and modulating itself. But if we turn on this remote option at the top here, that physically disables the internal LFO and lets us remote control it. So going back to the pattern module, we can press the assign button and pick the phaser's uh, remote input. Uh, we can speed it up a little and do a bit of tweaking and let's see what we get. And the pattern has up to three lanes of modulation and you can actually control anything within your rack. Now one of the big advantages of new rack is the ability to combine these uh, modules into a single interface. And we've added a few new features here including the uh, new vintage meters. And we've added, I think there's about 14 knob styles now, uh, which uh, you know can drastically change the presentation. And the great thing about new rack is if you need to work out how these things are constructed, it's easy just to drop out of uh, interface builder mode and look how these things are uh, put together. 
you can edit these and modify them to your heart's content. So new rec has close to 50 modules now and I want to just quickly go over some of the categories and what we have to offer. Uh, starting with the modulation effects we've got a chorus, a flanger, a phaser, a tremolo, a vocal doubler, a torque box straight vocoder, a univibe and a Leslie speaker simulator. Now remember these are just building blocks so you can mix and match these to create your own unique effects. So moving to the time domain we have a regular stereo delay, a tape delay which does some strange warping, uh, a reverb which is a very good reverb and finally a reverse delay which I demonstrated earlier. Uh, all of these can be synced to tempo. Now under spectral we have a parametric EQ, a graphic EQ, a traditional to stereo channel pitch shifter, an auto pan, a bit crusher, a tube overdrive, a distortion and finally a harmony which uh, creates um, pitch shift harmonies like the pitch shifter only there is no associated delay, it uses a different technique. Under the category dynamic we have a velocity control, a sidechain compressor, a multiband compressor, a noise gate and a gate stroke gapper stroke trancy thing. <laughs> Moving to filters we have a multi filter, traditional low pass high pass band pass, a low pass high pass module, a frequency splitter which is a dual fre frequency band splitter, uh, a multi-band splitter which is three bands, your classic filters which is your Moog stroke Oberheim emulation, uh, a formant filter and finally ring modulation. Now under automation we have a traditional touchpad, uh, an automation control which allows us to send values or uh, cyclic values to various knobs and sliders and a pattern control. Uh, there is a MIDI controller but I'm not in MIDI mode. So to tie all these together we have some visual items such as VU meters, vintage VU meters, uh, traditional little LED meters, we have a scope analyzer, uh, we have light objects you can tie to switches and knobs and we have this final uh, wave scope at the end. Now some of these such as the uh, analyzer and uh, light objects can be toggled, the modes can be toggled by double tapping so beware of that. And finally we have a bunch of accessories that are used for wiring, splitters and mergers, mixers, uh, gain controls and hard limiters. Okay that just about wraps up this video but in the meantime I'll leave you to rock out with uh, Andre's great demonstration of how to use digisticks for anything other than drums. <laughs> <laughs>